Hey listeners, it's a new month and of course that means a new sponsor. Uh, this month we are sponsored by Zebra Art Pens. And uh, Zebra is serious about making the best pens possible, which means their ink lab team is always testing, innovating, and perfecting ink formulas. And if you want to see what they have to offer, you can go to zebrapen.com and check it out. Uh, They sent us a, a wide variety of pens, mechanical pencils, colored pencils, mechanical colored pencils uh, that we're going to be giving away at our life drawing events uh, the first Monday and third Wednesday of this month. And uh, like I said, check out their website, zebrapens.com, and see what they have to offer. There's a lot of stuff there. There's a blog. uh, There's an artist studio where you can check out some artwork. And there's a link that says Find Zen, so you can go to zebraartpens.com and find Zen as well as plenty of art supplies. Thanks for listening. All right, welcome back, Inebriites. This is Andy, the Inebriar Podcast. We are back at the Craft Beer Cellar, pretty much as always, uh, on Main Street in Plymouth. If you happen to be in town and you're thirsty, stop by and pick up some beer. And uh, we are here today. I kind of met some people from the Massachusetts Horror Writers. New England Horror Horror Writers. Writers. (laughs) I know her name, though. I'm going to get her name right this time. Um, the New New England Horrors Writers Association. Yes. Uh, we've had some members on in the past, and, and uh, we connected through Facebook. And so we brought on Elaine Pascal. Yes. Um, and you're an author. Yes, so I you've, am. You're, you have your second book coming out. And yes. So you've already had one out. Uh, I'm assuming they're horror if you belong to that. Yes, they are. Uh, yes. How did you get into horror writing? <clears throat> I've always written horror. Yeah. Even like when I was tiny little. That's what comes out. Yeah. When I write. That's what I enjoy the most. Did you, you? Did your parents find that disturbing? Not so much. My parents are very encouraging. But I did have a professor at Emerson when I studied creative writing who his mission was to save me from horror writing. Oh. And he, quote, was going to save me from being published in Alfred Hitchcock magazine, which why, that why, shows why? how old I am. I was going to say, why is that a saving thing i feel like that's uh, the caliber a of authors thing. at alfred hitchcock magazine i know he yeah. just sort of felt like good writers don't write horror oh kind of very old school yeah be, everything should be you know uh shakespeare kind of yeah thing. you know that snobby that genre writing is, right yeah yeah um so what was like the first thing movie book or whatever that got you into horror like my grandmother used to read me edgar Allan poe as bedtime stories when i was very very young <laughs> i feel like today that'd be called it. abuse <laughs> yeah yeah i enjoyed it very much and yeah. i always i have always been drawn to horror movies mm-hmm. i find it very relaxing it's it's my stress reliever yeah to watch a really scary movie so wh- what are your what's your favorite type are, are, do you more like hack and slash? Are you more no, like- I'm and I'm not a torture porn yeah. person. I like um, I do like vampire movies, but not the romantic ones. I like like Thirty Days of Night. The- oh, Thirty Days of Night's fun. Oh, that's a great movie. Um, this has been a golden year for horror movies. A Quiet Place was awesome. I haven't seen that yet. I really oh my god, see that. you have to see it. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. It is amazing. That has the guy from The Office in it, right? Yeah, Jim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's amazing. He directed it, too. No kidding. Yeah, he's... It's amazing. Um, I don't know if you get Netflix, but mm. The Ritual, did you watch that? No. That's amazing. Mm. Really, really good film. My son's getting into horror movies, and so, like, when I just have him, like, we go to a horror movie or something like that. But uh, my daughter's not too keen on it, so, like, oh, okay. you know, you got to kind of always watch based on what's going to scare her the least kind mm-hmm, of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and we saw Happy Death Day. I think that was the last one we went and saw. Okay, yeah. It was fun. Yeah, you know? yeah. It wasn't the best thing, but I didn't hate it. Yeah. Um, so, Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah. Quiet Place. 
Yeah. Where does your book fall well, in between my those two? book, The Bloodlights, is a zombie story that takes place on Cape Cod. Okay. And I'm not a huge zombie fan, but zombies have been very good to me. I've sold more zombie stories than any other type of story. Well, they're very hot right now. They're very hot, I think, because there's so much anxiety in the world right now. I could see that. And planning for a zombie apocalypse is a good way of releasing some of that anxiety. Mm -hmm. Because it's sort of silly, but you feel like you have a plan. Yeah, and, and, you know, I remember when I was a kid, like, vampires were the huge thing. You know, Mm -hmm. Lost Boys. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love the Lost Boys. Oh, that's great. (laughs) And, um... You know, it's a different time. Now it's like people feel like the world is going to shit. Yeah. And that's very along the lines of a zombie mm-hmm. apocalypse. Mm-hmm. Um, and zombies are so mindless, faceless. Whereas the Lost Boys, you have like characters. There's real characters. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah the yeah. personalities. This, you can just like smash them and. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, zombies on Cape Cod. Yes. That mostly uh, th- are they tourists? Because I feel like that kind of happens <laughs> <in the summer. laughs> that is a good story. Yeah. No, it's actually the women, the girls and women of Cape Cod start acting very strangely, um, okay. and attacking. And you know, I don't want to give too much away right, of right, this right. story, but it does have to do with um, they do sort of see a light that causes them to become very very itchy and attack. And I think I was very interested in. The idea of female hunger being sort of repulsive and scary and not acceptable. Yeah. And when I say hunger, I mean hunger for power, for sex, and for food yeah. as well. So, um, so is it a little bit of kind of like a role reversal, you know, where women are the aggressors mm-hmm. instead of men? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I mean, we just had the Doritos campaign, which I know they sort of said was... The Doritos campaign. The Lady Doritos. They were going to what? come up with snacks. Did I miss something entirely? Yeah. yeah. Well, uh-huh. they, they claimed that it was n- like sort of a joke or a hoax, but then they came along and said, no, we are looking for snacks for women because women don't like residue on their fingers and they don't like to make loud crunching noises when they're snacking. Which I, I feel do. like that's bullshit. No, and because, I like to tip that bag back like, and pour I come in my home mouth. and be like, "Where the hell are the Doritos that I bought the other day?" Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. that whole idea of like women are supposed to be sort of dainty and quiet oh, see, and I feel like civilized. That, I feel like that was a very not only a passe kind of thought, but I, I feel like the majority of people don't even think that way anymore. I would hope. Yeah, I would hope. <laughs> but I also live in a very liberal state, so who knows? Yeah, you do. Yeah. <laughs> um. So you decided to go with zombies. Mm-hmm. How does, like, did you kind of go with the George Romero kind of zombie? Did you kind of do your own thing? They're, are they fast? Are they slow? They're sort of, they're strong, normal paced. Um, they do get sort of boils on them because mm-hmm. they're itchy. Yeah. So they do kind of decay as the story goes along or look a little decaying. So is it more like but, a, a bit of a, an infection type thing? Like, yes. Like um, 28 Days Later? Sort of, yeah. It's sort of a, the lights sort of affect their amygdalas, which, you know, their aggression centers yeah. and also infects, yeah, causes huh. an infection. And so you said you're not a fan of zombies like how did you come up with the idea did it do, uh, was it more like just you get this flash of inspiration and be like well i guess i'm writing a zombie thing now or, or were you like well i should write a zombie cause no that's... i didn't plan for it to be zombies i did sort of have a flash no pun intended my husband and i years ago were sitting on the beach with my cousin and we were a light appeared yeah above the water and just it was there for the longest time and it wasn't the moon and it wasn't an airplane and it, we couldn't figure out and of course we'd had a few adult beverages right as right well, right right but we couldn't figure out what is this light what is this and it felt like it was moving closer to us and so i i have to write a story to explain what this light yeah and it's is. always weird like those kind of moments of inspiration where you're like oh shit i just had you know yeah. an idea and the ones that I always like i don't know trouble me but like, I'll be like, oh, crap, I think I just thought of a really good idea for a reality show. And, like, I don't like reality shows, but that's a really good idea. You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. You're like, now what do I do with that idea? Um, so this is your second book. Mm-hmm. Uh, how does it differ from your first book? Is well, your first, first book, book also horror? It is. It's a collection of short stories, but they're linked thematically. 
And I guess you could say that one's a little bit feminist horror. I believe I write feminist horror, even though I don't set out to do that. Yeah. I believe that's sort of what comes out. Yes. <laughs> uh, and so what exactly is the New England Horror Writers Association? Like, how, do you, how does that work for you? Like, with you? Oh, it's and- great. It, horror writers are the most supportive people mm-hmm. ever. So thank God that professor didn't talk me out of horror because yeah. I've met so many wonderful people. But we... Um, Obviously, we have the Facebook page. I did Comic Con in Rhode Island. Yep, Rhode Island. Comic-Con. With, yeah, yeah, which was unbelievable. Yeah, have, you done, a, have you been there? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I haven't done the last one or two, but I did the very first one. I was at the to, one in November, and there were thirty five thousand yeah. people. I mean, it was insane. Yeah, I know the guy that uh, started it, and I remember the the very first one they did. Um, it was like thirty forty minutes in, and like we're looking up and down the aisles, we're like. Ugh, this is gonna be terrible. And a staff member happened to walk by, mm-hmm. and he's like, "What's wrong?" I'm like, "There's no one here." He's like, "No, they're having trouble getting them in." Mm-hmm. He's like, "There's so many people in line." Yeah, you can't move. You literally cannot move. Yeah. It's just it's so packed. But what I found fascinating, I did all three days. Mm-hmm. Nobody was kicked out. Nobody was fighting. Nobody had anything stolen from them. No, with all yeah. that amount of people, it was really it was amazing. Everybody got along so well. People weren't frustrated with each other. Mm-hmm. It, it was really yeah I, a great I've, experience. I've really enjoyed that one. And uh, the costumes were unbelievable. There, there's not too many comic cons that I've been to that I didn't enjoy. Yeah. Um, but the ones that I love to do, um, and there's a real distinct difference is you have the the comic cons. But then you have the horror conventions. Have okay. you done horror conventions yet? Mm-hmm. Which ones have you been to? Mm-hmm. I'm tr- now I'm drawing a blank that you asked me too quickly. Sorry. <laughs> I'll ask lower. I'll get back have to you. <laughs> you. Which ones have you done? Uh, so <laughs> I've done trigger. Chiller Theater in Jersey, um, which is a lot of fun, but you wait in line for everything. Um, have I've, you done Rock and Shock? Yes, I've done Rock and Shock several times. That is a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, great group of people that run that show. Um, I'm doing uh, Scarecon this weekend in Framingham. And Salem's always big, especially in October. Yeah. Um, I lived in Beverly for a year. Oh, yeah? And, uh, which right next door to Salem. And just trying to do anything around that time of year it's when crazy. you live up there is a, just, no pun intended, a horror show. <laughs> and uh, so I, I don't really go up there for that. Right. Just because I feel like it's more frustrating. Um. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to this weekend. Scarecon, I think, is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, so what show do you have next lined well, up in mind? I'm not planning any show. I think I mentioned in my conversation with you, we're relocating. We're moving to Florida. Oh, and, really? Yeah. And right now, all I'm doing is I paint all over me. I'm just painting our house like a whirling dervish. I'm just going yeah. from room to room. Moving's we're, the worst. We are just... It's... It's the worst and the best. Like we've never. I don't know. I feel like if someone's like, "Would you rather burn your house down and just file the insurance claim?" I'd be like, "Yeah, well, yeah, I'll no, do that. that. Thought, Thank you." Yeah. That thought has yeah. crossed our mind, definitely. But it's sort of we're just taking a jump off a cliff and just just you wanted to go to Florida. And let's just, just go. The kids are grown. Yeah. There's nothing really keeping us here anymore. You know, relatives have gone, moved on to the great beyond, and yeah. there's no there's no reason to stay. And do I you, hate the weather up here. I hate it. I, see, I don't mind I, it. I can't. I, I just, hate the weather in Florida. It's really hot. I love the heat. Ugh. I can't do this. It's, I can't. Yeah. No we, more winter. We were down there in July, and it was just like the worst. <laughs> um, so, so I haven't scheduled any. Yeah. So you haven't scheduled any. Events. No, because they I have don't them think, down there. And well, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. But people are like, oh, you coming back to Rhode Island? I'm like, well, someone wants to pay for my plane ticket right, and hotel. Yeah. And that <laughs> that began like I've done conventions in Florida. And that's what it boils down to is like, okay, I got to pay for a plane ticket and a hotel mm-hmm. room and mm-hmm. all this other stuff. And it it gets real costly. Yeah, real it does. Fast. Yeah. Um, so how do you promote your book then? Social media. Mm-hmm. Um, I've done some things with certain bookstores where they might have a reading or they might, you know, have like an author's event. Yeah. Um, libraries sometimes allow you to come in and talk it's really it's a struggle because the onus of promotion really falls on the writer's shoulders now right yeah you know especially when you go with independent so are publishers you, so i was just gonna ask yeah. are you published yourself or through, no, no no i yeah. don't self i god i can't handle that i <laughs> <laughs> i really have a lot of respect for people who do that cause i can't even imagine yeah. the amount of work involved in that 
but I tend to go with independent publishers. Mm -hmm. Uh, I shouldn't say tend to go. Those are people who tend to buy my writing. (laughs) um, But they you know, don't have the budget to do a lot of marketing. So it really does fall on the writer's shoulders. And most of us aren't business savvy individuals. That's, <laughs> that's why we got into writing. We were kind of just, uh, we were just talking with an artist who's putting out a comic book. And part of her final project in school was to run a Kickstarter. Mm. And I'm like, that's great because I feel like people come out of those schools with no marketing, right? no promotion skills, and so much of it is about it's that. It's true. Yeah. Um, so and that's the part I like the least. <laughs> the marketing. Well, if you wanted to do marketing, you'd do marketing. I know. And plus, once I'm done, yeah. you know, once I've written it, I feel like I'm done. I want to move on. I want to think about something new. So does the New England Horror Writers Association help with that sort of thing? Because I know they get a table at conventions. And so if you're around, you get to like put yes. your book out on the table. Is that how that works? Yes. And yeah. you can sort of chip in, you know. Yeah. A lot of writers will go together and share a table, which mm-hmm. makes it a lot more cost efficient to oh, yeah. do that. Yep. And if you stand next to somebody who's very chatty and you're not, like, I'm not, I'm very introverted. Yeah, you seem very chatty. <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, I have to be right yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I tend to be very introverted, though. So if there's some, you know, you're with other people who are chatting, it's easier to sort of. Yeah. And it's, get in uh, there. And, like, that's kind of brings that right back is, you know, I have a. Uh, Another friend of mine that just put out a fantasy novel, and he's very introverted. And it, it's that, you know, you're you're at a show, you put your money on the line, mm-hmm. you know, you, you have the table, you have your book, and now you have to... Get a return on investment. Yeah, you have to get these people <laughs> to buy your book. Yeah. And I, I always tell people, when people buy your book in that kind of situation, they're really buying it because of you. Right. You know, it's because they like getting to know you mm-hmm. in that 10, 15 minute conversation, whatever. And, and so it, it has to do with the book, but that's more like, well, I like zombies and you seem like a cool person. Mm-hmm. I'll take right. your book. Right. Um, and they want your signature cause you're right there. Yes. That. Yeah. yeah. And then I love the people be like, well, how much does your signature cost? And I'll be like, nothing. Wait, should I, uh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Let me go find a real writer. <laughs> yeah. Um, have you had people read your book at, conventions and then see you again in another convention like have you gotten that kind of response back not yet no yeah. no because i don't i haven't done a many repeat conventions i've sort of been trying different ones again yeah. i'm very introverted so getting me into the convention is a is, whole is other a bit of bit of a bit of work there yeah a bit yeah. of work yeah so i haven't been going back and then like i said i was like oh you want to come back I'm, i don't think i'm going to be in the state right yeah <laughs> so that's tricky uh so, and if you don't have anything to promote, it feels weird to go. I don't know. Just um, to... yeah, but you still have your other books, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes people just like, a lo- from what I find is, if you have one thing or two things, someone will try the the, the first book right. or, or your current book, and then come back and buy the other one. Right. Um, and I I still think that I haven't done conventions regularly in a long time, but uh, you kind of build up a, a rapport with with the people that you see and they mm-hmm. come back and you know even if they're not buying anything they oh hey how you doing blah 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 right and then when well, you they do say, have oh, I'll look for your when you, know, you do have a new book come out they take your, it right yeah. away yeah um so it, it's part of the legwork but you know like you said you, you're into writing not to market so that, that's the hard thing do you have a lot of other ideas already cooking for your next book like yeah yes yeah, I'm currently working on sort of two I, I'm always working on two or three different things at a time yeah. I'm, I don't know why, because well, in, my, no, I, in my non-writer life, I'm yeah. very focused. <laughs> in my writer life, I'm sort of schizophrenic. But I, I feel like um, there are different types of people, but, and I'm very much one of those people who work better when I'm working on a handful of things mm-hmm. as opposed to one thing. Mm-hmm. Well, can you can get space from one thing and yeah, come back and, and look at it again. Yeah, I get bored with it, and right, I can put right. it aside. And, right. and if I'm working on one thing and I get bored with it and put it aside, then I'm sitting on the couch watching Netflix. If I've got nine things going at once, then it's like, okay, well, I'm bored with that. I, oh, I want, kind of want to get onto that thing. Mm-hmm. And it gives you something to kind of always keep keep mm-hmm. the ball rolling and keep working. Mm-hmm. Um, but right the, now I've been slowed down with the painting and the, yeah. <laughs> and the moving God. and all that stuff. It, it is the worst, <laughs> man. <laughs> it's stressful. It's yeah. very stressful. Um, so you said your kids are older. Are they into writing and not really no my son is a business major yeah. he's 
his se- a senior in college. Uh, my daughter is a sophomore in college. Well, she's going in her junior year, and she's a psychology slash education person. And n- neither of them really are that interested in writing. They're are they interested in horror? My daughter is. She'll yeah. watch horror with me. Yeah, she likes it. She likes it. She's creative and very different. She's very artistic and yeah. a dancer and an artist, and she's very artistic. My son's more of a sports guy. He's, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the the thing that I really enjoy about the horror community is they're not so much like when you go to the comic cons. It's mm-hmm. it's people who oh well, I want to collect this comic so I have every issue and they're mm-hmm. in perfect condition and you know the. I don't want it's a toy that's wrapped and yeah. never been opened. And, yeah. Horror is more like, oh, that's so cool, mm-hmm. you know. And that's completely—it's just aesthetic. It's just they like that particular character. Um, do you ever get? Do you have that where you want people to kind of have that excitement? I mean, that's kind of a dumb question. Of course, you want people to be that excited. <laughs> um, but do you do you want your book to kind of like move on to like movies or like? Oh, obviously that'd be nice. Yeah. That would be. A compliment. Um, I so this one. It's more of a novella. You can see it's not terrible. It's not a Stephen King heavy oh, break yeah. your back book. So I sort of see this as like a beach beach read. So uh, people are, who are on the Cape are going to read a zombie book about <laughs> being on the Cape. Yeah, sure. Oh, that's, people watch yeah. Jaws on the Vineyard. I mean, oh, that's true. Actually, <laughs> oh, where was it? There was um, somewhere I can't remember. It was somewhat local where they had like a uh, movie screen set up on a beach and they're showing Jaws and you watched it in the water. I, and I saw them do that in a pool too. Yeah. yeah but on the beach, that would be unbelievable. That would be so cool. Yeah, I don't know if I could do it. <laughs> I really so, don't know. So are you, like, I don't, the horror movies I tend to enjoy tend to be uh, old, campy B-movies. Oh, I love those too. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, I don't fun. find a lot of stuff very scary. So, like, are you the person that gets, like, freaked out by the yes. movies and then have yes. bad dreams. And yes. Be, yeah. Yes. I get, he, my husband's kind of smiling because uh, <laughs> I'm always like, when we're in bed and, I, and I'll also read scary things at bed and then I'll be like, where are you going? Don't leave the room. <laughs> no, you know, so I'm really scared. And I watch the movies between my fingers with the covers pulled. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. No, I do. I get scared. Cause I just, I think everything's real. Like I think, oh, you know, yeah. now Hannibal Lecter's in my closet. <laughs> <laughs> Um, in in what movie franchise is your kind of go to one out of the classics? Again, I like the vampire. I love Nosferatu still, mm-hmm. as old as that is. He's yeah. cute, isn't he? Cute. I don't know if cute He's is the cute. word that I used I love to describe him. him. I love him. I love the old vampire movies. I love Boris Karloff. I love. Um, I teach. I told you, I teach a monsters class. Oh, you. Really? I think I said that in one of my messages. Oh, I teach a class on a college class on monsters. Um, at what college? Uh, Suffolk University. Yeah. And when I show them clips of the Frankenstein, the 1930s Frankenstein, they laugh. They think it's so funny. We talk yeah. about, you know, is he scary? Is he not scary? Is he can't be? Right, right. You know, those are fun. So is the class just kind of about the history of monsters? And, it's, and we do monsters from different perspectives. We do psychology of monsters, yeah. what we learn about. Mo- why do we need monsters? Why does every culture have monsters? Yeah. Why do cultures who would have had no way of communicating with each other have the same monsters and tell the same stories? Like you've got dragons in China, you've got dragons in Europe. and what? Every, every culture has a Bigfoot. Right, exactly, yeah. exactly. We talk about that. We talk about the economics of monsters. What does Nessie do for the Loch Ness area? Oh, <laughs> does, God. I mean... What does Mothman do? You yeah, know? it would destroy their local businesses. Yeah. yeah. They had proof he wasn't real. Right, exactly, yeah. exactly. So we do some history, some psychology, some literature, some economics. We look at it from all perspectives. Yeah. Uh, so what is, like, your favorite crypto zoolo- cryptozoological Yeah. Thank you. I think I do. Well, Slender Man is super interesting to me. Yeah. Because they've come out and said, Slender Man's a hoax. We made him up. And yet people still believe in Slender Man. And right. swear. It's did, have you seen Slender Man? Well, I. Did, did, is there. 
Did they do a movie? Yeah. I know they were yeah, doing they a movie. movie but the thing is, okay. Slender Man, like the whole thing, is maybe ten years old. Oh yeah, I yeah, know. yeah. Like, it's like I super recent. Was yeah. like the I know the I know where it came from. I know where it started. Yeah, when I said that, your eyes lit up. <laughs> and I was just like, wait a second. I know Slend- Like I'm familiar with the ARG it started, and and it's one of those things where it's so oh. very odd to see it kind of developing its own. Like it, it's weird to be. It's weird watching mythology like grow and yeah. all the yeah. time going. No, no, no. Wait, I I know the guy who started that. Right. Yeah. It's weird to be like I, the guy who started Bigfoot. His name is Steve. You know. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it, it's like you can do that with. Yeah. It's like you can Slender go Man. back to the guy who started the whole thing, and it's like God, that's so. And it's but people are people, adamant that he's real. So why you do you why do you think it is? Each other over it, and it's baffling. Why do you yeah. think it is that people insist on it's real, even? though we know it's not we want these things to be real we've explored so much of this world Mm -hmm. we know so much already that it's exciting to think that there are things out there that we could still discover like bigfoot like a slender man yeah um and be an expert be the one who finds be the explorer the conqueror the one who finds it so you think a little bit of is the want to to kind of lay claim to it that it's yours sure yeah. and the storytelling aspect when the Blair Witch came out I grew up in southern Pennsylvania on the border of Pennsylvania mm-hmm. Maryland so when the Blair Witch came out which scared me yeah <laughs> it did scare me I felt <laughs> nauseous in that movie I think I, I felt like nauseous motion that, that last shot scared me a friend of mine swore no the Blair Witch is real remember remember yeah. we grew up around here the Blair Witch is real I was like no it's not right. it was just made up for this movie and, and I th- there are people who are like, oh, that's that's real. That really happened. Right. And you're like, I just saw the dude on Arsenio <laughs> Hall last night. Yeah. It's definitely not real. But it's exciting yeah. to pretend it's real. It's it's just like when we thought the Tooth Fairy was real. When we thought you Tooth believe Fairy's not Santa real? Claus, yeah. We thought Santa Claus was real. Yeah. You know, it's it's that excitement of being childlike again. Yeah. It, it just... On the cape I, I, I we have... I struggle with, like... Okay, I get people like, oh, we don't know everything, and... You know, there could be a Bigfoot creature, but like Slender Man is a perfect example. No, we we know who did it. We yeah. can trace it back to who did it. On the Cape, we have the Marsh People. Marsh People. Yeah, I don't think I've they heard that come one. Come out, they live way deep in the catacombs of the marsh. They have mouths like steel traps, and their hands are like fish hooks. Really? Yeah, they'll come out. Have and you heard get of this one? Fish? No, no, this is new. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've never heard this one. Th- well, wait, in a couple of years, people will be talking about it. <laughs> wait, are you just making this up now? <laughs> I want to claim this now. All right. <laughs> this one's mine. All right. I'm sitting here trying to figure out how like, marshes have catacombs. I'm like, that doesn't work. But well, I was just trying to think. I'm like, are there like marshes those, on the Cape? They have those sort of like winding paths. Okay. You know what I'm talking yeah. about. Catacombs is just a pretty way of saying it. Yeah. yeah. Just, it's all like, it's all caves. They're That's holes. Weird. Yeah. They're it's holes. like big yeah. holes. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, big holes. They're that's only, not they're quite only as catacombs because they put your skull in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. That's it. Yeah. Um, but it's it's interesting because of all the history in this area. Yeah. Of all the ghost stories and monsters and creatures, oh, the Bridgewater and, Triangle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Fish lives in basically in the middle of that. I used you to did? live in the yeah. middle of it. Yeah. Um, never saw anything interesting at oh, all. Really? I saw a fox. I saw a gopher. I saw a turkey on the way hedgehog. to work this morning. I mean, that stupid deer almost hit my car one time. <laughs> Nothing out of the ordinary. Deer did hit my car one time. Yeah. Um, but those legends still persist. And, yeah. you know, it's the Bigfoot type creatures, giant birds. And it is the same thing over and over again. But the aliens are real in the Bridgewater Triangle. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are there aliens there? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, People have been abducted and probed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the So do you think it is, like Fish and I have had these conversations, The what drives the similar reports where those, you know, the, the Hockamock, there's a giant prehistoric type bird, mm-hmm. the Native Americans have the Thunderbird. Well, there's a lot of theories that the giant creatures are because there are giant cre- There are people that are over seven feet tall. There are people, you right, know, but you think there are it, animals that are large. And, and, and early people would have had no, yeah. they didn't have the science to explain this. Right, they sure. didn't have the science to explain. You know, maybe they found fossils where a lion and a goat somehow 
became fossilized together. They died together. And right. Oh, this is a creature. One this thing. is a hybrid. This yeah. is yeah. So do you, do you think that uh, like more modern day accounts are people misunderstanding what they see and then interpreting them as something else? Perhaps, perhaps with Bigfoot and things, it might be seeing something yeah. moving in the darkness and you don't know what it is. Or maybe these things are real. I mean, vampires are real. Sure they are. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Right? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you just never want to date one because the yeah. whole meal going out to eat is just yeah. awkward. They always want steak tartare. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and the interesting thing that I, I've watched a lot of... Um, is how YouTube is affecting right. everything because there there's videos of you know the top ten mm-hmm. weirdest uh, videos that have been posted mm-hmm. online. Some all are, the ghosts you can see, yeah, yeah. and some are like downright horrifying, right? That, and you know they're just some videos that someone put together, but they're still creepy. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, social media has had a huge impact on yeah. the way we talk about monsters. Oh, yeah, definitely. Do you do you think um, do you think that's why Slender Man is the way he is? Oh, because absolutely, of social media? absolutely. Yeah, people yeah. started making up stories, and other people started believing those stories, and then people started believing themselves. That, yeah, oh, I saw Slender Man. Right, right. I, I remember that. Yeah, you know, they started tricking their own minds. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, but Slender Man's such an archetype that the really tall, spooky, you know, almost skeletal. Yeah, he, you know, he fits. Well, a, to me, like I just look at him, and go, it's a tall, it's Jack Skellington. Yeah, that's it, what it, I mean. It's, he fits an it's archetype. The, it's the Disney "Don't sue me, Jack Skellington." Yeah. <laughs> um, so, what is your next book going to be about? Like zombies, vampires, werewolves, Real Housewives. That's <laughs> Pretty scary. <laughs> yeah. Like the show Real Housewives? No, like murderous Real Housewives. Oh, okay. Yeah. That'd yeah. Interesting. That's one of the things I'm working on. Yeah. And then I'm working on something else that's based on the, um, you know, the women during World War II that flew the planes, uh, the Noct Texan, they called them the Night Witches. Oh, the Night Witches. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sort of yeah. playing around with that a little bit because hmm. that fascinates me. Yeah. Those women really, they did amazing things for having nothing. Yeah. Do you listen to a lot of podcasts? Yeah, I do. Yeah. No, because I just... I've feel- listened to yours. Oh, you, God. You- <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's no. fine. She, she still showed up. Yeah. We're fine. Um, no, but I just, I just feel like the, the amount of information um, available now via podcasts, you can dial in to, to such specific genres that... Like I've listened to some history podcasts and, and oh, okay. gotten like tidbits out of them and goes, Oh man, I don't know how, but that like in my mind right now I'm thinking of something, I'm like, there's a story there. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is yet. Mm-hmm. But I definitely like that is a great thing in history that needs to have like some sort of fictional mm-hmm. right. R- yeah. So is that kinda how you came across the night, mm-hmm. which is because I just heard a podcast about the night, which is I didn't get it from a podcast. Long. I don't even remember how I came across internet i'm yeah. sure yeah. came across it and the same thing it was like oh there, there's something interesting in there that could really be yeah. fictionalized so in- for our listeners that want to know more about the night witches uh go to stuff you missed in history class and search for night witches and that's an <laughs> excellent podcast um and so you're you, you've Always been into horror. Yes. Um, but who are the horror authors other than Edgar, Edgar Allan Poe? Not children's books. No. Um, well, of that, course, I love Stephen yeah. King. Of course, I have to say that. <laughs> but you don't have to. I feel like... I feel like but I do. I'd I be, do I'd love I'd be interested him. in the person and be like, I don't like Stephen King. Um, I don't think any of us would be doing what we're doing if he hadn't yeah. come along. He, he's or... definitely the one that elevated it to a, a bit of respectable, like yes, you know, where you can be like, I'm a horror author, and people are like, ooh, opposed to, ugh. Yes. Um, I had a big thing for Clive Barker for many years. Yeah. Um, he's a great writer. I'm trying to think, you know, because I, I, I sort of bounce back and forth between writers. I don't always read horror. I'm a huge Chuck Palahniuk fan, huge. Um, and he's not horror, but he's no, is he is uh, Fight, Fight Club? Club? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's brilliant. I was reading Choke, and I never finished I lo- it. I oh, my God. That's I don't, my favorite. I can't remember why I didn't finish it. 
You have to go back. That's my favorite. Oh, I do remember. It has the best epiphany yeah. for a character that ever happened. Yeah, I know they did a movie with Sam they, Rockwell. Yeah, I, which I haven't seen good. it. But, it was yeah. good. I didn't hate it. I liked yeah. it. But it, yeah, you have to go I'll back have to go and, back read. and read it. I, was, I remember I was enjoying it. Some, the, the book got destroyed. Well, yeah. So. <laughs> That's what I, happens. I, no, like it like got damaged. I couldn't reread it. Oh, okay. So, um, so uh, what other genres do you like to read? So I, I do I do like those sorts of things. Yeah. Um, I don't even know how you'd categorize that weird I don't, nihilistic. I don't, I don't know what you would categorize either of those. Maybe. Yeah, um, I do not read anything romantic or. Although I am reading and reviewing Nancy Kilpatrick's Thrones of Blood, which is a vampire series, mm-hmm. and it's highly erotic. Yeah, which is not normally my taste, but I'm really enjoying. It. I'm that's a, a little. That's a common thing for vampires. Though, I know. I, I get a little hot under yeah. the collar when I'm reading. I mean, uh-huh. I'm a little like, woo. Especially if I'm reading on a bus, and I'm looking. Like, Nobody <laughs> sees what I'm reading right Turn now. Some some guys lean over your shoulder. <laughs> yeah, reading exactly. Over your shoulder. Yeah. Like your breath is a little. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so you said you're reviewing them. Do you review for I website review or? for Hell Notes, um, Horror Review, and Confessions of a Reviewer. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you're pretty busy. Yeah. Um, I enjoy that, though. I love yeah. doing reviews. Too. So is this all done in your free time? Like, do you, yeah. do you have another profession? <laughs> On my bus. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I have a full-time, I'm a full-time uh, college teacher. Yeah. But, yeah, it's sort of, I don't sit much. <laughs> I totally understand. What I do you're like saying. to keep busy. Yeah. I do like to keep busy. And so you became a teacher. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm assuming an, an English teacher. English, yeah, yeah. of course. <laughs> um, is it to create more horror writers? Like, is that no. like your? No, no, I don't. Just what it, to inspire them to do whatever they want to do. Inspire them to do whatever they yeah. want to do. Inspire really inspire them to read. Yeah. a lot of people don't read anymore or enjoy I'm not a reading. Big uh, I have always struggled with English and reading and writing really? and whatnot. And uh I I say all the time that I feel like I have a undiagnosed learning disorder. Okay. Because I grew up in the seventies, so then you were just dumb. <laughs> um but like I was a kid that was like taken out of class to go oh, okay. go over the uh, more spelling stuff Aww, and I still can't spell. like shame involved with it. And... Um no, honestly I never really took it as shame. Okay. I get more shame now. Oh really? When people like Oh, that's not how you. That's not the right your, and you're like, yeah, but you knew what I meant. Exactly. This is Facebook. <laughs> Shut up. Down. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, but I have good friends that torment me on a regular basis about it. You know, that's that's what happens. Um, no, actually, as a kid, I never really. I was just like, it's not my thing. Mm. I'm not good at it. Mm. Um, but I, I didn't read until. I mean, I read. But, like, I didn't read for fun. Right. For enjoyment. Until probably after high school. Oh, okay. You know, I've, I've always read comic books. Um, but I never really... A couple here and there, but I never really picked up, picked up a I book. I often until, get that with college yeah. students. I've taught... Years ago, before it became a film, I taught The Hunger Games. And the students loved it. And they said, this is the first book I've ever read. Yeah. And what, what else can I read that's like this? And, and that's one of those... Um, I think it's kind of like a, a a fallacy that people will fall into. Be like, well, I don't like reading, and be like, could it be that you don't like what you have been given to exactly, read? Cause exactly, because there's so many books, mm-hmm. you're bound to find something. You mm-hmm. Like, and like you said, graphic novels. There, yeah. some of them are wonderful. I love to review graphic novels. Yeah, yeah. Uh, any noteworthy ones that popped to mind? That- well, one that I taught years ago was it, it's not really a graphic novel, but it's an illustrated version of um, I Am Legend, the Richard okay, Matheson, yeah. the the original story yeah i am legend and it was so nicely done and was the original story called i am legend because yeah. i know the movie's been yeah. called a bunch of different things yeah. yeah and it's the illustrations are so helpful for people who live in this century <laughs> yeah. he, you know he's playing a record player he's you driving the station wagon that you really if you didn't have the context for it it yeah. might not make sense but now oh here's a picture Here's a, a really nice illustration of when, what's going on. When you write, do you ever think about that? That someone, uh, maybe down the line, especially the, the way things change nowadays, yeah. 
that like, oh, you know, the person takes out their iPod and be like, well, will people in 10 years know what I'm talking about? Exactly, yeah. Um, yeah. But do you ever like take that into consideration well, when you write? Yes, and this novella took quite some time to be published. It was a slow, mm-hmm. it was accepted quickly, but it took the company a while to publish it because yeah. they're an independent. They, right. you know, they sort of got backed up in their queue. Sure. Yeah. So I did have some concerns about, ooh, did I mention like a TV show that no longer did is I on the MySpace? air? <laughs> yeah, they're sitting down watching Brady Bunch? Yeah. Might not. <laughs> uh, but, it, but that's uh, an interesting thing that I never really thought about, like how you can really end up dating your work. Yeah. And well, it also works in the other direction. Like many Stephen King stories, like Cujo, yeah. when they're stuck in the car, when you're reading it now, you think, well, why doesn't she just call for help on her cell phone? But there was right. no cell yeah. phone. So yeah. Yeah, they exactly. wouldn't be stuck in their car today. Which I feel like those are conversations I would have with my kids, where they'd be yeah. like, why don't you call someone? I'm like, you can't. So it only works then, because yeah. today any mom would whip out her cell phone and call for help. She right. wouldn't be stuck in the car with her kid with the dog outside. Are you interested in to see like what kind of horror will come out w- based on the new technology like uh if you watch black mirror at all yes oh my god it's amazing it and, is and that first episode scares, the first episode I, with any, the pig anyone i tell to watch it's an that, attractive pig let's let's not it's uh, a very play pretty games. pig <laughs> uh, but everyone that i recommend that to i go don't watch the first episode and yeah. they're like really i'm like well you can watch it but like watch the whole season and then go back and watch the right. I like, can never look at that actor again. He yeah. was in um, Penny Dreadful. He yeah. played the Frankenstein's monster and I just can't look at yeah. him now. I'm, I'm like, it's fine. It's not a great episode. Like, to lead off, I, I think it's a terrible lead off. I think they're just trying to shock us. You know, it Yeah, just, but I, I I don't know. I just feel like... It's kind of a depressing series, though. Really. I can oh only God, watch one at a time because yeah. I need to take space yeah. after I watch one. There, there are some... I've out loud yelled at my TV (laughs) over that show. And it it is very much, I find it, I find that more horrifying than I think any horror movie I've ever seen because you're like, that is six months away from happening. Right. You know, it is so realistic and it takes our technology advancements and shows us how we will use them to screw ourselves over, basically. Mm -hmm. Um do you see more horror going in that direction? Oh, sure. Maybe some sort of digital monster that has yet to be seen? Oh, sure. And maybe some sort of disease monsters, microbe monsters. Um, zombies definitely are going in that direction with nanobots and, yeah. and those types of things. Definitely, yeah. I mean, people are afraid of technology. People embrace it, but a lot of people are afraid of it. I, I feel like the majority of people are afraid of it. Turning against us or just changing our lives so much. That in, in a lot of, well, I don't understand how that could happen, so it has to be bad. Right. Um, I was having a conversation at work the other day. Have you heard of clean meat? No. So clean meat, they are learning to grow um, animal meat in a lab situation okay. and it's fascinating just the meat or the animal just the meat okay so, so we're the, not killing the anything. animal's still alive the okay. in in one it's, i haven't i haven't eaten meat yeah. in like 30 some so years be- very, because of the yeah, animals in a very interesting thing that they did uh not that long ago they took a sesame seed biopsy from a chicken chicken okay they grew chicken meat in a lab from okay. that chicken and turned it into chicken nuggets, and then ate the chicken nuggets at a celebration dinner okay. that the chicken was at. Ooh, weird. And I'm like, okay. God, that's so weird and yeah. kind of icky. Um, but there's a lot of like really fascinating things. Is It's way better for the planet because the sure. amount of energy and space and Absolutely. pollution yeah. is cut dr- dramatically. Um, it is healthier because a lot of the foodborne illnesses okay. are come from the animal's organs. Right. And there are no organs. Okay. So you and the animals are happier because we're not because they're alive torturing them. Yeah, <laughs> we wouldn't need to like factory farm. And, right, and, right. So it was really fascinating. And this woman I work with is like, it has to be bad. And I'm like, why? Well, it's not natural. I'm like, well, there's plenty of natural things that are really horrible for you. True. You know, so just because it's natural doesn't make it good or bad. It's just natural. Uh, so, and it was just that she didn't under like really understand like every process that went into it and we always wait for them to tell us i'm not five years from now i'm not gonna be the first guy to eat it but i'm interested you know 
Um, I would maybe try it if nothing yeah. died. I would definitely try it. At some my point, rule but... is I don't eat things that are afraid to die. So if nothing, well, is that's pretty much everything. Yeah. 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 Well, broccoli is okay. Um, do you feel uh, broccoli could be afraid to die? <laughs> um, do you feel some of that comes from your like horror? Part of it does, but part of it is growing up in farm country and having named the cows and snuggled with them. <laughs> it's really hard to eat something that like I've always just like I don't eat dog, you yeah, know, it's really hard. I, I've always been like I could name a cow and have my hamburger mittens and no problem. <laughs> Snuggling with it, that might be a little different. Yeah, yeah it's hard. Yeah. I could see that being being troublesome. Uh so where can people go to find uh Bloodlights. Amazon.com. Let's mention the other one here. The other one is, if nothing else, Eve, we've enjoyed the fruit, which yes. is a collection of short stories, correct? Yes, that's correct. Um, so it's on Amazon. Amazon.com, or they can go to ElainePascal.com, and there's links there as well. Yeah, and uh, you, do you have social media presence other than, like... I'm on Facebook. Um, I'm Doc Laney on Twitter, D-O-C-L-A-N-E-Y. I'm on Instagram. Yeah. All the normal. I'm avenues. everywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're everywhere that horror wants to be. Yeah. Um, are there any horror movies or books that you're looking forward to coming out later this year? Oh, that's a good question. Um, hmm. Coming out later. I'm kind of interested to see what they do with it now that I've seen the first. Ooh, what'd you think of the first one? I enjoyed it. I thought it was great. I like, enjoyed. It. I really liked Pennywise, it. Pennywise, I wasn't. As I didn't have as much of a reaction as I did to the Tim Curry because I was so young when I saw yeah, that one yeah, and yeah. I sort of knew what was, but I thought the kids were great. Yeah, I thought they did a really. So I'm interested to see what they do and who they cast. I'm curious to see if it starts a whole new push of bringing Stephen King movies not back, but like you know re- revamping them, redoing them. Oh yeah, you know, I think. We'll see more of those. I think we will. I mean, Netflix is full of them right now with yeah. 1922 and Gerald's Game. And, you know, there's so many of them. A Good Marriage. That one's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I could see them maybe going back and looking. Well, they did Carrie. They did another Carrie. They did another Carrie? Yeah. I didn't even know that. Oh, yeah, they did. I feel so, like movies come out they, so fast they now. They it's should hard to keep maybe. Track. This is probably very unpopular, but they should maybe look at The Shining. I was not. Really? Yeah. Wow. I'm, I'm not a Kubrick. Yeah, I don't. I, we may just have to edit that part out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know, no I, one will buy my books after I that. I personally know people that will hunt you down now. <laughs> <laughs> see, I would like to see more like the ones that w- weren't critically acclaimed. You know, Salem's Lot would be cool. Yeah, you know. Like, like a really good Salem's Lot Yeah, didn't they cool. do... Um, did he do Silver Bullet? Was that one of his? A good Under the Dome because the TV show was horrible. Oh, I never even watched that. Oh, God. Yeah, it's that painful. bad. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, they can't all be good. Yeah. So, what about? Did you enjoy the Green Mile? Because that is not horror at all. I could only sit through it once. That, that yeah. was so emotional. Like, I just can't. I can't yeah. deal with that story. It's so sad. It's, it's very so, sad. Yeah. It's like just once is enough for that. Yeah. I can't go back to that. And I don't want them to redo that. No. I don't think they need to. That was great. That but was... that's, and I know you haven't seen it yet, but they're talking about a Quiet Place sequel, which I hope they do not do because that ended exactly oh, the way I, I hate, wanted I it to end. I hate when they, a movie comes to an end. No, it ended beautifully. Yeah. It's exactly, it was everything I wanted at the end. Yeah. But like it comes to an end, it's an end. Like, yeah, yeah. The story's over, and then like, oh, we're going to make a sequel. And I'm like, why? Yeah, why? Jim from the office, please don't. Yeah. <laughs> Please don't. Yeah, I, I just feel like, and then Hollywood's like, oh, you know, movie sales are down. I'm like, stop making shit yeah. and make something new and good. Yeah. 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 Like Bloodlights. Yeah. <laughs> feel free. Feel free. Um, well, thanks for coming down and talking Thank to us. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, best of luck with the move. I, <laughs> you know, I feel for you. I hate moving. It is the absolute worst. Thank you. Um, and, you know, it's unfortunate that I get to meet you right before you move. Yeah. But uh, stay in touch. And Definitely. If you, you know, if you get a new book, maybe we'll have to uh, phone in an interview or something. Yeah. Skype something. I, yeah. Phone in. I'd yeah. say, like, fly down to Florida, but fuck that. I don't like Florida. You might want to. If it's in the winter. Oh, actually, uh, whereabouts are you going in Florida? The Tampa area. Tampa. I'm trying to think of where I was. How, how close is that to Orlando? Two hours, an hour and a half. All right. Well, if you go into the Orlando, you got to go to 2-2 Tango. 
Okay. It's a restaurant. Um, I was down there for work back in January, and my boss is like, I'm making us reservations for Tutu Tango. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know what that is. He's like, you have to go. Uh, wall to wall art. Oh, wow. Everywhere. For sale. And then they have working artists there that you can go up and talk to and oh, see what fantastic. they're working on. And it's a tapas restaurant. The food is great. So I highly recommend okay. Tutu Tango if you get around to the Orlando definitely area. Definitely will try that, yeah. So, so now I'm just looking for excuses to go back there. Yeah. Um, but it's in Florida. That's the problem. And it's like really in the heart of Orlando, like right where like all the touristy crap right, is, right. you know. But what are you going to do? Yeah. Oh, so best of luck. Thank you so much. Now that so I'm bitch about Florida. <laughs> right. Um, and uh, so our listeners can make sure they check out your book on Amazon and your website. Yes. And uh, that's it. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. All right. Thanks for listening to our podcast. Uh, don't forget to check out our other podcast. Uh, there's the Bar Talk podcast. There's Old Colony cast. And, of course, the Inebriar Art podcast along with Jam Packed. Um, you can find all those on Stitcher, iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, pretty much anywhere podcasts are found. Um, if you're on some sort of service and you can't find it, let us know and we'll help you out and or add our podcast to that too. Um, you can contact us at inebriart at yahoo.com and follow us on Facebook as well as Twitter at inebriart. And feel free to send us some um, tips, ideas, advice, hate mail, whatever it is, you can get us there. And again, thanks for listening.